Hi athletes! We're a week away from the Ironman World Championships here in beautiful Kona, Hawaii and I wanted to do a little video to help anybody who's traveling here to the big island or maybe you're an athlete yourself and you're traveling to a race and you're concerned about a few things that may happen to you during travel and then how to deal with them to make sure that they don't negatively affect your race. So the three things that I'm going to be talking about are three topics that athletes often come to me when they need help and they're not quite sure how to figure out these things or they want to prevent them from happening when they travel to a race. So the first one that I want to talk about is constipation. And I think that a lot of athletes experience this whether they realize it or not, but that your body is just a little bit off, you're sitting a lot, you're very sedentary, you're not moving, you're not yourself, and a lot of times this happens when you're flying or if you're going on very long road trips. So in order to prevent this constipation from happening, we need to make sure that you're well hydrated. So make sure that you always have a bottle of water with you and you keep refilling that bottle and you keep drinking that bottle. So make sure that you stay very well hydrated during your travel. I'm not gonna give you advice as to what type of diet to follow because I feel that that's very personal. I'm not gonna tell you to follow a high fiber diet because if you're an individual that tends to always experience constipation on a regular basis, then having a high fiber diet, it may actually work against you. So it's important to figure out what type of athlete you are and what type of diet will work best for you. Will you do well with a high fiber diet to help you stay regular during travel or are you better off on a low fiber diet in that 24 hours of travel and then resume your normal style of eating. That's up to you, but you need to figure this out ahead of time. And then the last thing that can help you out with uh, relieving the constipation is try to work out as soon as you can when you get to your final destination. Now this has some um, constraints on it. Make sure that you're not working out at 10 o'clock at night. You need to go to bed. But if you get into your race venue within a reasonable hour after you uh, settle in and unpack, go for a little workout. And I find that for a lot of athletes, running or jogging helps move things through your body. Most people feel like like, oh my gosh, I need to go to the bathroom now when they run, whereas you may not have that sensation when you're cycling or even swimming. So going for a little jog, 20, 30 minutes, it may help get things going, and you may find that you feel a lot better afterwards. And the second thing that a lot of athletes tend to worry about is just feeling off around the travel time, that you feel these niggles, these pains, you feel really uh, tight and just kind of without energy, and that's understandable. I mean, you're not yourself, you're sitting around, you're usually very active, and plus you have all these phantom uh, taper pains anyways, where you suddenly feel sick and you feel like, oh my gosh, my Achilles has never bothered me and now it's hurting me, and so we just call those phantom pains that tend to just kind of pop up on race week and then go away. So you're trying to deal with a lot, plus you're very sedentary. My suggestion to you to help with this feeling of being off is to try to move around a lot. So try not to just sit when you are flying. Make sure you uh, take stops when you are in the car and try to move around as much as possible. When you do get to your race venue and you do do your first war workout or warm up, however you want to call it, the next day, make sure you give yourself an extended warm up. Start with some like foam rolling, some mobility work. This is going to help loosen you up so that you don't start your workout feeling very tight. Also make sure that you do some type of dynamic warm up that's also going to help you get the blood flowing and it's going to help uh, you feel like you can get more into a rhythm earlier in your workout. And don't be afraid to extend your warm up a little bit longer than normal. If you usually need 10 minutes to get warmed up for a run, a swim, a bike, maybe you need 15, maybe you need 20. So don't try to time crunch your workout. Give yourself the warm up that you need. And the last thing is just healthy eating. I feel that every athlete wants to eat healthy and give their body the nutrients and fuel that you feel you need and you deserve, but it can be a little bit overwhelming when you are traveling. My suggestion to you is, uh, number one is to have a plan. And so when you're traveling, especially when you're going through different time zones, try to eat every few hours. So in the case of traveling to Kona, when there's a six hour time difference, so when it's uh, 6 p.m. and Eastern Standard Time and it's 12 o'clock in Kona time, and you still have all these meals to still eat when you get to Kona, and you may be thinking, oh my gosh, that's so many calories, I don't wanna eat too much. 
we really don't want to be thinking like that. So the best way to go about this is eating every few hours, but small meals. You never want to be overly hungry and you never want to be too stuffed. So by having these small meals, you can complement the meals. Start by having these sandwiches, wraps, maybe some rice and a protein as a more substantial meal. And then in between those substantial meals, you have a lighter mini meal. So perhaps a, a bar or some of my favorites like fruits and vegetables and trail mix and uh, maybe a salad. So foods that are maybe a little energy dense, but they're mostly nutrient dense. So they kind of fill you up and they help you pass the time by, but you're not super full. You're actually satisfied by eating these smaller meals every few hours. When you do get to your final destination, and it's evening time, have a nice light meal. You should feel satisfied, but it should feel clean in your belly, very easy to digest so that you can go to bed very well. And if you are, uh, go to bed easily. But if you are having trouble falling asleep, have some type of carbohydrate that can help kind of make you a little bit sleepy, which when you want to sleep, that's a good thing. So maybe like a bowl of cereal, a handful of granola, banana, a, few, a handful of raisins, it may help you sleep as well. And then continuing on with the next day is have a plan as to what you're going to eat throughout the day. You know, do you need to do some grocery shopping? Do you know where you're going to eat? Have a plan for yourself so that you can kind of get yourself into your normal race week or race week um, eating routine as soon as possible. But if you have no idea where you're going to eat and you don't have any groceries, you're going to feel completely off the next day. So make sure you have a plan for yourself. So hopefully I covered some topics that may help you out if you're traveling to the Big Island or perhaps another race, dealing with the constipation, dealing with that feeling of just being off and wanting to stick to some kind of healthy diet when you travel. I know they can be very overwhelming for athletes, so hopefully my tips helped you out and uh, best of luck if you are racing on the big island next weekend.